So take us through the process, embalming a body. Embalming a body. So I get a call. I go either to a hospital, the home, so wherever that body passed away, I got to go pick them up. Once they've said they're going to use my funeral home or XYZ funeral home. So then I pick them up, talk to the family, set a date for them to come in probably the next day, 10 or 11 o'clock to make the arrangements, get them the embalming room. First of all, I'm going to ask them if they need to be embalmed because it's not a law that somebody has to be embalmed. Number mm. one, lots of people don't know that. So that's a, that's a good thing you brought that up, actually. Yeah. Because you don't have to be embalmed if you're being cremated. You don't have to be embalmed if you're having a graveside service. So don't let the funeral director make you buy something you don't need. Right. In other words. So, but if they do want embalming, that's going to be if they want a public viewing. Because that's going to give me time or whoever time to take that body and make them look more like their self. Because when somebody passes away, they don't they don't look great. Usually right. They're laying there, their mouth's open, their eyes are open. They just don't look their self. Mm. And everything's relaxed, and it's it's just not a good situation. But if we can have that time, take them back there, I can get them on that table, go into my little cabinet of goodies, I call it. I call it the wizardry cabinet. So mm. I, I got all these chemicals, and I'm going to look at that person and then pick out four or five chemicals that I think is going to make that person do what I need it to do. Bring them the right color back, fill them back out, things like that. So, like, like, for instance, if somebody got really sick and they've sunken in, like their cheeks have sunken in, I can actually take something and inject in there and fill those back out to make them look 10 years younger and more like their self. Wow. That's, that's, that's a lot right there. Yeah, I, that's, that's I, right. I got so much room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was good. That was nice. Good, though. This is Thinking Minds Podcast. By the way, I am Max C. Max C. Don't Sleep. It's your boy, Mental B. Whitey Pines. Justin Kirby, the last man to let you down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. So this podcast right here, uh, very special right here. Because a lot of people, you know, well, not a lot of people, everybody. Everybody got that day. Got to see a mortician at the end. So uh, what is your job description again? My job description, I'm the, the owner, president. CEO, go get her, go for this, go for that, do it all, vacuum cleaning, everything. How about that? I do that's it all. what's up. That's yeah. hey, you're the the most lively mortician that I've seen. Yeah, a lot of them, yeah. their hands are yeah, wrinkled like, and they're just scary yeah. looking people. Yeah, like, I don't yeah. want to be that guy. Yeah, when Most I roll up in the funeral home. I don't have. I own one white dress shirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> all my shirts are colors and all kinds of crazy stuff. Because I, I just I can't be that normal mortician guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Vento, look when he pulled up. He said he's outside, and I ran out there and I said, "Hey, he's in a hearse." And he was like, no, <laughs> shit. Like, you know. Yeah, I, like, no. I would have brought it if I thought about it. But I came from the Titans guy. So I, I mean, I'm not going to lie. I was a little shocked, too. I thought, you know, y'all were looking like dead pe- people than walking around. You yeah, know, the Undertaker, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Undertaker yeah. for real. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Undertaker has that t shirts with tattoos, right? Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> crazy. But no, nah, I feel like you grew up kind of like we did. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Kentucky. Uh, but you grew up. And you were taught this trade, and you grew up around this trade. So just, you know, give us a little background of what that was like coming up. And, you know, that's All right. So, yeah, I grew up. My parents owned a funeral home. My grandfather started that funeral home. And I grew up literally around the corner. So my driveway and the parking lot of the funeral home adjoined each other. So I was always going down there to see what my dad was up to because he was working a lot back then, building that business up. And it just watching him serve people and just help people. And then after I started working there – I can't describe the service it is. Yes, it's tough at times, but the reward I get is I help people through one of the toughest times of their life, and I can see them years later, and they come up and give me a hug, and they, they remember me for that. So, I mean, I'm doing the, doing what I'm supposed to do, the way I look at it. Yeah, yeah. that's that's a lot of responsibility, too. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Because you're making sure these people do their farewells and give their farewells the right way. And I tried to get away from it. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to say that I always knew that's what I was going to do because I grew up in it. So, therefore, I had a little rebellious part of me that wanted to get away from it. It's like, I'll never do the funeral business. I'm not going to do that. But What what made you what made you say that? Like, You know, just, you know, I, when I was younger, I was just, I was the guy I had to push everything to the limits. I had to do everything the opposite. So, what brought you just, back to it? What brought me back to it? Just, um, I got into the pre-need side of it when I, after I got married. Up in pre-need where people make their pre-arrangements. So, like, they plan everything in advance. And I started working for a company, and we had, like, 15 funeral homes, and that kind of got me back into it. 
and then just helping those people. It just, and then I had a bad car accident. And I'll be honest with you, I think that's what really got me back into the funeral home part. So I had a wreck going down the interstate, and I broke like thirty six bones. Mm. They had to cut, wow. cut me out of the car. Like it was bad. I mean, they told me I wasn't ever gonna walk again. So and I was laid up in that hospital room, and I that's what changed me. Yeah, that's what changed me. Let me ask you: Are you are you a man of faith, or what do you believe happens after we go? I am now. After that wreck, I mean, I, I would say I was always a man of faith, but I didn't follow my faith. I wasn't a very Christianly man, if that makes sense, because I did everything the opposite of what I was supposed to. But what I've seen with death, people that, that have God in their life and faith, when they have to grieve, those people can grieve better than people that don't, if that makes sense. Because yeah. I've seen both sides. Guaranteed. And people that don't have any kind of faith or religion in their life, they, they have a tough time, man. Yeah. And it seems like they have a tough time for a long time. Yeah. You got, you got something that well, I got a lot. <laughs> um, first thing first, do you, will you say you love your job? Is that like something that like? I actually you, do. I you actually do love my job. Bodies, now I don't. I'm not. I don't want you to think that I love for somebody to pass away. Yeah. But uh, yes, I do love what I do. I get up every morning and I look forward to going and doing because I don't know what's going to happen during the day. Like I don't have a normal job. I'm not going to say no. I'm going to get up today. No, not at all. I'm going to go do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to do that. I might go to breakfast and in the middle of breakfast. That phone rang, and then somebody just lost a loved one, so I got to reroute and, and that, do everything. Uh, your trade is not, like, there's not people signing up for that. You no. know what I mean? Yeah, like, because it, he said that he is everything. Yes. He's CEO, cleaner. If I didn't have my wife and my two part-time people and my kids coming in there to help me, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. Like, so you don't they're not the knocking down the door. have, like, no notifications, like, ah! Yeah. <laughs> but that's most of the there's time, There's just not though. people knocking the door to be a funeral director. Yeah, it's a family thing most of the time. A lot of times. It's like, but, and but, your kids. You know, that's, that's funny you say that, because when I went to mortuary school, that's been, I'm 44, and I went when I was 19, 20, 21, so, therefore, that's, what, 25 years ago? Mm -hmm. And when I was in school, I think there was 100 students in the school. And that's downtown Nashville, right next to the plasma clinic. It's crazy. Yeah. It's in the basement of a building. That's where the mortuary college is. <laughs> so it sounds got, like so it. We yeah, got, it does. Yeah, don't it's yeah. kind of yeah. creepy. Yeah. <laughs> kind of fits the bill, don't yeah. it? But anyways, you got like 95 people in class. And they asked you, you know, who all has been in the funeral business? And me and one other person raised our hands out of those 95 people. Wow. And I would have thought like you did. I would have thought half of them or something. Yeah. But by the time that two-year program came around, half of those people would quit. Yeah. And probably it. now half of those people are out All of that. Out so of you got maybe 20 that's still in the business. So from when you said 19, you was 19 and you're in your 40s now, that's a 20-year span. What's changed? Is technology like a big part of oh, your job? Oh, most definitely. Now? Most definitely. But before, before COVID, and I hate to use that word, but before COVID you didn't have live funerals and drive through funerals and all that stuff. But when they changed all those laws and you could only have 10 people in the building and that wasn't rotating 10 people, yeah, that, you know, most families are a lot bigger than that. You got a family with 10 kids and they got brothers, wives, sisters and everything. And you tell them they can't come in the funeral home. I mean that you had to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have like nightmares about the bodies you have to go through or anything? No, thank God I don't. Ever seen ghosts? <laughs> ghost kind of thing? Ghost? I <laughs> I believe in ghosts. I believe been in, in ghosts? Yeah, I've been in a couple of situations where there's ghosts. Tell us. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, Hold yeah, on, yeah. let's Talk get an you. introduction. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, the, the right introduction <laughs> is, what's the craziest thing that you've seen yeah. being a mortician? Yeah. Any sounds, is, energies? Somebody wake back up? Like, I don't know. No, I've never seen like that, but I've heard stories. Like, all right, so my granddad started this business, my Business in Bowling Green Years in the sixties. Like, so he was the corner back then. I remember him getting a body in the body bag. I think they had a car wreck and they got three bodies back to the funeral home. And one of he's over there embalming one, and then one over there moving in the bag because he went passed away. So he took it back to the hospital. Mm. He had a baby one time. He told me that he went and got at the hospital, brought it back, and it started crying. Whew, had to take wow. it back to the hospital and then go get it back later. Just. That's weird, but just that's just. A, I think that's where the technology wasn't there back then. Just a little yeah. bit of a uh, like back because I have a quick question about that because back home in Africa, uh -huh. um, we have a they they have a theory that if you get in a morgue, you ain't coming out even if you are awake. Like they don't now bring you back out. Yeah, like, they didn't already got the yeah, payment. Once once <laughs> once you make it in, yeah. If you wake back up. 
Yeah. Pray to God. Say, he's not, <laughs> no like, refunds. No, yeah, he's like, nah. ain't no refunds. So it is weird that you even yeah. talk about yeah. about a big guy. I only know it. one. Like I read this old story from this lady, like over in Britain or something. She has this rare disease, and she goes into like these coma-like states, and she's woke up in the morgue like eight times. Wow! And, but that's the only thing I've ever read about that. Lord, yes, I that poor woman. That's all. Yeah, I'm I know. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it's freaky. But yes, yeah, go 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 into by your. Experts were of something free. So, so, yeah, so, the so I lived in a house over in West Virginia. Yeah. And it had a little separate garage out back. And me and this, my neighbor, his name was Clay. We were standing out there talking one night, and there was this little TV on the shelf. And that TV come off the shelf, like straight out, like 10 foot out in the room, and then slammed down on the floor and shattered into like a 1,000 pieces. There's no way it could have done that without something. Mm-hmm. Like what? What do you mean? Come off the shelf? Like, like it was a, a tube style TV, you know, yeah. old style yeah, TV, big yeah, heavy, sitting on the big shelf. Heavy yeah. Stuff. yeah, it came like ten foot at off the on the line off the shelf, and then got out there in the middle of the room, and then went straight down and shattered. No, and I looked and Clay, wow. this boy was big, man. He's gone, <laughs> gone. No, like no. I turned around, I had a cigarette. Out, he's gone. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the crazy thing about this story is, and I didn't think much about it until like a month later. This lady shows up at our house, this this young lady, and she's like, hey, my grandmother's in this car out here, and this used to be her and her my grandfather's house. Yeah. And they haven't seen it because she's been in a nursing home for all this time. Do you mind if I bring her in and let her see it? And I'm like, okay. So my wife lets her in. She walks through there, and she's like, my husband would have loved these windows and all this stuff you've redone. After that, we never had another problem. Yeah. Really? So I'm thinking it was him. What else could it be? Yeah, 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 yeah. But after she came there and like blessed that home, re-blessed it, yeah, it all quit. Everything goes away. And I've heard lots of other stories and stuff, like, but I've never had anything at the funeral home happen to me. Happen to you? Yeah. I mean, like maybe somebody come around the corner and scare the shit out of me by accident or something. But <laughs> so, so what's it like? Because you deal with sorrow every day. You you're around that. You know what I'm saying? Like. How do you keep from bringing that home with you? Yeah, how does that affect your mind? You know, that's a good question. If I had to do, like, children and younger people all the time, I don't know if I could separate the two. But, like, for instance, I had a lady a couple weeks ago that's 96 years old. She lived a long, good life that's different than somebody two years old or five years old or 15 years old or something of that nature. Mm -hmm. That makes it tough. And then I think my dad told me a long time ago that the funeral business gets harder on you as you in it longer. And the reason I say that and the reason he told me that is because you become friends with these families. You've helped them with somebody that they've lost. Mm -hmm. It's a cycle. So then you start knowing more people that you're taking care of, and that makes it tougher. So That's something I've noticed, especially in in small towns, is once a family finds their funeral guy, they're pretty loyal to that guy, right? If he did his – yeah, you know, so and that and that's I mean that's a good example. Like I came in against two, two, two or three funeral homes that have been there for eons and eons and eons. Yeah. But I just do things different. I just uh, I mean yeah. When it, you look at us, we all have that piece of paper that says we're a funeral director. But that doesn't mean we all conduct business the same way. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah. you know you were talking about I bought that old grocery store. It was a save a lot grocery yeah. store. That's one of my favorite sayings now. Is that's still a save a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I just save you a lot on the end. Yeah. Of <laughs> Good one. <laughs> Hold on, before, before we go. So I want to go back, okay, okay, to the embalming process. Okay. Um, so the embalming process. Um, so the organs are removed. No. Are they put back in? Are stuffed back in? Or how does that? All that like, is actually stays there. If I if if I'm just embalming a body, I don't remove anything. Okay. The only time that stuff is removed if it's an autopsy's done. So that's where they're sending it to a medical examiner, huh. sending the body there, and they're going to do their examinations, and they're going to cut that person open and take everything out to do to find out why they passed away. Okay, that's, so that's like, why they do that. What about the when eyes I embalm, and mouth? Like the the they say like I guess sewing the mouth up and drying the eyes out are the tough one of the toughest things. So, well, if they're a donation, if like they're a tissue donation, they come back with no eyes. So then you've got to put like a fake eyeball in there. It's actually strange because I just had someone that passed away and they they were asking for permission to have the eye be donated. Yes, they have to ask for permission. So any time someone passes in the state of Kentucky, they have to call CODA, which is the Kentucky Organ Donors Association. And then they have to do 
they have to rule it out whether they're going to take something or not. So you don't take out anything? Mm-mm. Nothing. No, I make about about a three inch incision is all I do, and I do all my work from there. Wow. So you take out the fluids and, mm-hmm. and you put. If you want it in simple terms, it's like flushing a radiator. So what I'm doing is I'm. I know that sounds crazy, <laughs> but I'm gonna put it to where it's almost like taxes. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it to where it's understandable. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna make an incision. The artery and the vein are always laying together. They're always on top of one another. The artery's on top and the vein's on the bottom. So you raise that up, make an incision in the artery, insert your little machine. You know your tube in there from your embalming machine, and that's gonna pump it in. You make a hole in the vein, so basically you're just flowing it out. So once you cycle that all the blood out of that person, then you're going to see the embalming fluid start coming out of the vein instead of blood. So with technology, has the embalming process like is it a speed sped up easier oh, process? Well, with yeah. like I mean, just back in the day, and... back in the day, you hung a bag up on a pole and it was gravity fed. Yeah. Like I, I want, I don't want any part of that. Wow. I've got a machine I can hit a button and it can pulsate or automatic pressure. I mean, it's basically does it all for yeah, you. Yeah. So like back in the day on. If you was draining a body, you would hang it up, and you would cut the arteries right and drain all the blood out. Well, I mean, not they wouldn't hang it like a deer like that. They would still they had an, uh, still a table, yeah, and they would drain it into table, a yeah. bucket or some type of system like that. But is that to make because it's more humane, right? I guess, yeah. yeah. Okay. But nowadays, well, with OSHA and everything, you've got to. I mean, everybody that has a legal embalming. Well, room. OSHA is also overseeing the. Oh, yeah. The embalming oh, room, yeah. God. Osha is in everything, bro. They are. They got their Lord, hand in everything. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> you got, you know, you got your state or you got all your organizations that's got to have their piece of the pie. Yeah. Organization. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. get that in a second. Point. What's, yeah. what's the youngest you've ever had to do? Like, what's the youngest before, body you've ever like, had? I would say a day old. Oh Lord, <clears throat> stillborn. Stillborns, I've done them before they're actually born. So, I mean, yes. it's hard to say what the youngest is, but I would say probably if, if if you're saying nine months is born, I could say probably a few months before that. Man, I'm glad there's people like you out there, bro. And that's a tough real. one. That, like, it when y'all tough. ask when that's tough, when, yeah. I, when I go into that situation, I don't take my stretcher because that's just, to me, that's too much. Because, yeah. I mean, you're, you're going in there. So, I've got a little bassinet basket I carry with a blanket in it, and I'll carry it up there and then, well, it, but it's tough, man. I, if I had to do that every day, I'd have to say, guys, we're going to have to talk about something else. I'm out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Guarantee it. And you have to pick up all the bodies. Like mm-hmm. you said. If, if I don't, like say, if I'm in a situation where I'm at a funeral and I can't go, yeah. then I'll use my dad's mortuary service, which that's here in Bowling Green. Mm-hmm. So they do work for a lot of other funeral homes. So small funeral homes like me that don't want to go pick up people and don't want to embalm, they'll let them do that for them, and then they'll take them and do but it. But I, th- I think that's a testament to the way you conduct that business is because you do everything from the ground up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Well, and I'm a believer, too, when you got somebody working for you, which eventually I'm going to have some people working for me, but as a boss and an owner, I feel like that if you can do it from the bottom to everything, the top and you yeah. show them, you're well, it's much more respected. Yes. Everything's better that way. Yeah. I, I honestly, go ahead. Do you have a question? No. Go ahead. I mean, I spent what, the day uh, mopping and cleaning so, bathrooms the other day. I mean, that's yeah. just. Yeah, I saw that. You was running <laughs> yeah. a vacuum yeah. in there. I saw that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but that's daily. You, I mean, it's you just. You been in it? No. I posted it on yet. Facebook or yeah. something. It's just because oh, I teach really, my kids. You probably seen it. If you've been oh, okay. to Russellville, you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I, I just. I've. I've been in funeral homes, but yeah. on that other side of it, it's yeah. somewhere that I don't ever see myself. Well, like to me, like most funeral homes are mainly, you know, in an old and house. And talk about yours, like you was talking. Well, about. like yeah. most funeral homes, they come in an old house. They started out this, started out that. They've been added on to. They're very antiquey. They got old curtains hanging up. It's just a funeral. Oregon it's and, a funeral home yeah. thing. That's just how it is. So I want to do something different. I, I mean, I built one with a. I think my lobby's three thousand two hundred square foot or something like that. It's huge. Couches and tables and places because when we go to a funeral, we see people we hadn't seen in a long time. Mm-hmm. We we see family we hadn't seen in a long time, friends, and and guess what happens? We all want to catch up and talk. So you got, I mean, that's what you're doing. Yeah. And if you give a place for people to do that, they can also talk about that person and celebrate that person's life instead of making it so morbid and depressing. Yeah, and you get, got a chance to get away from people, too, because not all families get along, right? That's right. Yeah. So, you know. That is true. Especially, that's one, I think it's a testament to that. You know, when my family gets together, 
Some of us is on this side. Some of us is on that side. You that's know what true. I mean? So, yeah, that's, that's – But it gives enough room to where people can separate like that, and then they don't have to worry about that. And it had never been a problem. But if it is, we'll take care of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, can you tell us about the cremation, cremation side right. of – Cremation's more popular nowadays I because it's less money. Yeah. yeah. Really? But there's what what a lot of people really? don't realize is there's different options with cremation. So you got a direct cremation, which is I pick you up, I bring you to the funeral home, we sign some paperwork, and I take you to the crematory. Bada bing, bada and how bada. much does that usually run, right? Twenty four hundred dollars, something like that. Around here, I mean Kentucky wide, it's gonna be anywhere from like two thousand to four thousand, just depending on the area and where you're at. Okay. But somewhere in that neighborhood. And then you got cremation with a memorial service, so they'll have a funeral yeah. or service, but they don't have the body there. Yeah, I sure have. And then they got one, like I got a rental casket. I know that sounds weird, but the end of it falls down, and a whole casket goes inside of that. And then that person's cremated in that casket. So they can be um, embalmed and have a visitation. Visitation, yeah. And then a mm-hmm. funeral, and then I, be cremated I afterwards have instead of going to the cemetery. A close so, friend of mine went. Cremation, and then cremation, too. Like, you don't have to have your funeral right away. So, like... You get cremated today. We can we can wait a month to have the funeral when everybody because a lot of times families are scattered, man. Yeah, They're not yeah. all close by. Yeah. So you can't really really say have a funeral. Let's say you, if I die today, let's have my funeral two days from now because there's a good chance everybody's not gonna get here and wait on your there. insurance and all right. that stuff to kick in. Yeah. But it's still strange here. The funerals usually happen within a week, mm-hmm. like and then depends on your insurance. Yeah, I, yeah. You see, but I'm, all I'm saying is like. I, I guess we don't have insurance back home, and you don't do that kind of thing. Everything this, week. but each like, region's different. Like some places will be, they'll wait two weeks to have a funeral. Yeah, yeah. Have a fun, like, but like funeral ha- happen morning, take a day or two, and then people go back to work. Like, versus where I grew up, like it's a whole month to like a whole month to so a, what they do with the months. bodies over there. That's the thing. Like they do some good and bomb. The bodies, <laughs> like, do they freeze them? Do they freeze bodies over there? No, but I mean the they body is right. literally still yeah, I, yeah. It, it burning, but it's still like they're doing that whole time. You know, like you said, family me- members are in villages. Mm-hmm. They have to come and they got to have to have there. to come time to see the bi- bodies. So like, and here, man, I see less tears. Right, I fin I fin a home, which kind of I think sometimes people do it too quick. Yeah, they, yeah. They just yeah. want to yes. get it done. Which, yes. I mean, I'm not saying that's right or wrong because everybody grieves different. I mean, there's no you can't tell somebody how to grieve. No, but, it's true. Because everybody's totally. But it's different. just people here do it fast, and because of that, you don't get the time to process the em- emotions, right? And like whenever and my boss just passed, like the day off, AJ hit me, and I look like the the weirdest guy out at the at the hospital. I walk in in there and they said. I walk in there and everybody's standing around and they're like, he's dead. And I was like, what? He's dead. And I just like, I lost it. Like, I just, I just, that, that was like my third death within three months. And, and, and I actually went to the Kirby's funeral home here. Like, I've been to all the fin- funeral home here all in this same year. Mm-hmm. Every single, single one of them. And I started to think about death too. I was like, all right, this is a little bit too creepy. It. Yeah, it go, does. When you have to go to Real. several funerals in a row where yeah. you've lost people, it makes you think about it. Have, but, you, have so, you ever but, heard the old, a southern adage that death comes in threes. Yeah, people say that a lot. Yeah. It does kind of sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes more than that, unfortunately. So weird. with them being like, if uh, uh, the body sets longer, is that a different process? Do you have to go back and redo some things as far as like the embalming process? You got to do like a, a second wing of it? Or? Well, I mean, if you do it right the first time, you don't have to worry about that. So how long does that last, though? How long would it last? I mean, if you have a refrigerator, like if you embalm someone and you've got a refrigeration <laughs> unit and you need to keep them for quite a t- some time, that's not going to be a problem. Six months? I'd say so. Yeah, a place it's like huh. Ghana, a place like Ghana, right? It, it doesn't it, happen it, often like that, but yeah. yes, it can be done. They have a traditional where where the body is not in a casket. It sits in a chair. They sit the body in a chair, and everybody, like, like it's a person that is still alive. Yeah, I've seen sit, I've seen videos. Yeah, and, and then like that. and some people dance with. I've the never body. seen anybody up in the recliner like, up in my yeah, place. Yeah, like no, on, it, it, it's, I will. So, I mean, if that's what they want, we'll do it. A yeah. party is going on, and everybody and and you see the body sitting right there. You know, I've like, seen pictures. I had a guy you, one time show me a picture of a guy on a crotch rocket. 
He passed away. And yeah. They had it. They had him sitting on it up in the, yeah. the chapel. Football I saw, game. I saw, yeah. I saw like a. It was an outlaw's funeral, and the biker was up on it. There used to be a TV oh, yeah. show about so, bizarre funerals. Yeah, that, I don't. It was the pretty, guy in the strip club. <laughs> yeah, all kinds of stuff. So uh, I've read like if you if you Google this, the, the the numbers say that the funeral business like is declining. Have you noticed anything? Within the past several years of that, well, I, I think they say that because the old funeral director doesn't like cremation. He hears that word and it's like a nasty word. Well, cremation is just another version of a, of getting rid of a body. I mean, of a final disposition. So it's either going to be burial or cremation. I mean, it's your it's your choices. Mm-hmm. And people just need to understand that that's part of I want to be what the way the world's going. So you just have to be able to offer things for that cremation. Yeah. Instead of say, thinking it's it's a bad thing, why not come up with ideas to have all kinds of different ways to celebrate that life with a cremation? I mean, so being a, a religious deal. person is very tough, you know, to say. And which is also strange because, you know. I would think it would be the perspective because by his perspective, he's saying that he's doing a good deed far as for the family. If you look at it, I would think going into that, like seeing the family and stuff like that, like, damn, he looks so good. Like, because I right. had my father and when he And it's necessary. Because yeah. think if there wasn't people like him out now, there. I, I've had know, people what where, we do? like, you, you'll fix somebody up, and they come in there, and they're, they're going to have a clothes casket. They're, they've, they've told you that from day one, right? Yeah. And then once they go in there, they're like, um, we've changed our mind. We, I think we want to leave that open. Because that person looks so much like their self. That damn white. Yeah. Better what, than they did. Like this or right. Yeah. There. Then yeah. th- there's the opposite of that too. I've had people where I've gotten them looking so great, and they're like, "Well, you want to be closed, so we got to close it." And you're like, "Man, yeah. so really. <laughs> all those hours of work." But. What do you do with all the <laughs> fluid that you drain? Okay, good question. So yeah, because I about always that. the fluid the fluids go into the sewer system. Oh lord, I, I knew know. it. I knew yeah. it. Like because I tell people there's a lot when I drop out funeral home, I smell death all the time, and I'm like, most people don't like understand like all that fluid. It's right below us just running. But like, it's also getting diluted with water and chemicals. With chemicals and everything. Time. Yeah, yeah, I want to say I mean, it's not going to cause anybody any problems. And combination, I'm guessing, the smoke, because that's something, too, I wonder about. What happened to all that smoke? Okay. Being so the way the crematory it. works is it's actually got, like, three different flames. Okay. So you've got the flame inside the crematory, uh-huh. and then all that air forces to the back, and there's a square back there, and then that goes up into the stack. So when it goes into that stack, it gets reburned there, uh-huh. and then it gets reburned again with another flame going up. So there is no smoke whatsoever coming out of that crematory. Really, it's just clear all the time. Wow! Wow! Yeah. You can get That's rid of smoke right there That's because it reburns it. Really? Yeah. yeah. And you would never think about that. No, and, that, and the, and the cre- most crematories are burned. in places where there's residential homes and everything else around, and you probably would never know it's there. Yeah, I thought, I think about it a but lot. But it's too. highly regulated by OSHA and all that stuff, too. So That's good, that's good. We can take a break. Uh, yeah. we take a quick little break. Uh, tune in, man, tune in. This is a good one. This is a good one. Thank yeah. of Minds Podcast. Yes, like, subscribe, do all that type of stuff.